Yeah. Jeez, it's not my job. Whack it, toots. I, I'm an actor. Yes. <laughs> Like that. All right, here we go, guys. We're uh, uh, Now, from some distance out, what are your strongest or your fondest memories of the shoot? It, it was just relentlessly enjoyable. It really was. There was just there was no major dramas at all. I'm trying to think of you know funny stories, things that went wrong on the set of Bad Eggs. I can't think of anything. I do remember on the first day of filming, it wasn't even a scene from the movie, it was a photo that we were shooting to appear in a newspaper in the movie and it involved uh, some people throwing a coffin down a flight of stairs and on I think the very first shot we did, so this is literally the first thing we're shooting for the film, the coffin went down the stairs, hit the bottom stair on a sort of an awkward angle and bounced into the nads of the guy taking the picture and, and there was like 60 people at the top of the stairs just looking at me like I was John Landis and this was some kind of testicular twilight zone but he did recover, he'll never have children. Fortunately, the, <laughs> the character I play is dangerously close to me. Do you like wearing sleeves? Just a word. Okay, partner. In light of that description, is it flattering that Tony wrote the character specifically for you? Tony wrote the character <laughs> specifically for me. He had to, he had to be careful because I think the first, the first stage direction I ever read went a shabbily dressed man with, with some kind of, with unkempt look. I can't remember, but uh, I gave it straight to the lawyers. And action! C can you describe your initial reaction to the script as a whole when you first read it? My initial reaction to the script as a whole, oh, I guess the first thing that popped into my mind was I thought, oh, I'm playing Mick Malloy's love interest again. Ah. You know, at first when I heard that Tony had specifically written a part for me, I was, of course, extremely flattered. And then I thought to myself, well, does anyone specifically write a part for Judy Davis? No, because Judy Davis can act. So I thought that possibly the implication there was that I couldn't act my way out of a paper bag, so I went from being incredibly flattered to just downright insulted. In fact, he's lucky I didn't blow the whole gig off. Who has authority over Ted Pratt? Well, it's fucking Satan for one. Chicka chow. <laughs> that is fucking out of order, Northey. That's my thing. Don't do the chicka chows. <laughs> Cut. <laughs> 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 What was your initial reaction to the script? My initial reaction to the script, I seem to remember saying, is this it? Have some pages fallen out, Tony. Uh, but no, that was, that was it. Ted's got a strange way of punishing people. I don't know. What do you mean? You know, how... Hey, what do you mean? I'm talking about the barrels. I know. What's wrong with that? <laughs> huh? Nothing. Nothing, Bill. Right. Absolutely okay. nothing whatsoever. In fact, there's a barrel waiting for me out there. All right.
Okay, I'm going to keep going through a couple of people with you, Bill. Okay. The um, I've got Bob Franklin here on my list. Yeah. Um, He's on everybody's list for one reason or another. Go on. How would you describe Bad Eggs? What sort of film is it? I would describe Bad Eggs as a tax dodge, uh, presumably. There's clearly been very little thought put into it. Someone's obviously doing doing something in terms of of uh, laundering money. <laughs> it hasn't been all playing sailing, really, has it? It needs to be kind of rotated on the back. Well, once you get the camera up, you'll put a lens on it. You can say, well, yeah, or no. <laughs> I can do it. I can do both of those. I've just said, Graham Wood's just been complaining that the sun's come out. Uh, time to just clear Graham to have a look. Thank you. The last see. time we'll hear that phrase in six weeks. Graham's our cinematographer, and uh, this scene is set in the middle of one of the sunniest days of all time in Victoria. Can we get a couple of big fans to blow this away? What was the most enjoyable part of playing a cop? I think the most enjoyable thing about playing a cop is that there have been so few cops in movies that uh, it's pretty much an open canvas. This is the shot we're trying to do here. This shot here. This is uh, set in 1989, hence the hairstyle. And I've drawn them all back to front. So everything that's that way is now this way. So I'm going to go into the toilets, hold my pictures up into the mirror so that I'll know what we're filming. It was pretty scary, uh, you know, just walking onto a set to direct a movie, but obviously you don't do that. You spend months and months planning it out. Um, we had, you know, storyboards, very anal kind of uh, serial killer style notebooks full of very specific drawings on how we were going to shoot everything because we didn't have a lot of money to, to go, you know, just experiment. We had to plan everything. Action! Bam, 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 bam. <laughs> there is a great flashback sequence, which is of course a uh, mixed character uh, Ben's fantasy. Somewhere around shot six, look to make wink and then look back. I'm wearing what can really only be described as a red mullet, which makes me look like a cross between Pat Benatar and Chrissy Amphlett. We've also got a lot of cleavage happening, and that whole sequence is quite hilarious because when I appear, of course, doves spring out. So the whole thing has got a very Bonnie Tyler total clips of the heart sort of vibe going on. And action. But essentially all I had to learn to do for that scene was to be able to go. So it looked like I was about to go into a cartwheel. Action. Judith Lucy, I think, did a, a fantastic job on Bad Eggs, uh, particularly as she was mixing uh, medication with, with alcohol for most of the shoot. Now you're working with Mick Malloy again in this film. Yep. Um, <laughs> I, I, I take it. It goes in threes, isn't it? I've got one to go. I'll be free and clear. Yeah. Well, I've enjoyed immensely working with Bill. 
and um, socialising with Bill, which is also a remarkable experience. Yeah, Mick's a delight to work with, as are the Malloy boys. I think it was always a that was because of the shot or something. Like, um... Mike has, has broken open the, the cachet of the really good stuff. So this is like really the top, top shelf, shelf celebrity play. <laughs> Sadly, what you'll be seeing on here can't be described as that. I don't know where this came from. <laughs> what it means. All I know is everyone signed their release for it. <laughs> You've obviously always enjoyed dressing up and playing other characters. I have always enjoyed dressing up. Um, Miss Marple has been uh, a favourite. Um, and as soon as, as I'm away from here, I'll, I'll be slipping into, uh, into the old Marple duds. Um, yeah, always enjoy them. Wise decision, Mr. Norby. Pickle Beast, the old XL9000. Best separated from the herd, first sign of trouble. That's good. I'll get this straight up on the blocks. Whatever. You've seen his pens? Got four colours in one there. You did let me see the back. Just moving the lens box. I was really trying to keep him. Sorry, uniform duties has to be. Great. We're back in short fucking sleeves because of an accident. Ben, I'm on your side. If, if, if Ted fucking Pratt was here... Yeah, oh, yeah, if Ted fucking Pratt was here. You'd be, uh, he, he lends squires one time. <laughs> 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 oh, this one contained a computer disk. What's this all about? What's this all about? Thank I feel you. I can deliver that line with conviction. <laughs> <laughs> Ken, we're releasing Julie Bale. That's the scene. Yay. I think we need a crane shot. <laughs> Tony Martin described it in his interview that he enjoyed the fact that you and Mick are quite passive and he got to do lots of things to you during the course of the film. Did at any point you feel manipulated? I think Tony manipulated us in his mind. Uh, certainly that never sort of transferred to anything actually on set. Um, he didn't have his glasses with him a lot of the time, so he often thought he was talking to us, but he was he was talking to a light stand or something. So um, I don't think he had that much effect. Yep, I smell fat wits. <laughs> Work with Bob was great. I've worked with him before on uh, my TV show, which. Uh, and he lasted eight weeks, actually. Probably shouldn't have worked together again. <laughs> Could spell disaster for this film. Action, bang, bang, bang! Oh, oh What a winner. Yeah, for six months, I mean, it must be a year ago when he first mentioned it. And I said, yeah, I'll be in there. I'll do anything. I'll be there. And he said, no, I've got a part for you. So I was really surprised when it came through. It's great. Action! Great go. And working around the train timetables <laughs> on this film. Train? Cutting. Cutting. <laughs> One day we'll laugh about this. But there's also people who understand the genre of of cop thrillers, but which I suppose is most of the Australian public, with Blue Murder and... I'll go back, everyone will enjoy this film. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thank you, Alan, but we have to wait for the train now. I'm going to be doing that all tomorrow night. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I'll, I'll start again. It, I, I think this will be a really good... <laughs> I think this will be really a really good film for all Australian audiences. Um, from 18, 16 onwards, just because Australians are so au fait with the cop, corrupt cop thriller genre. What was on that disc panel? Bang. Ooh, nice deck. Correct. Was that what it was? More shoulders in those. Shoe, shoe. That's style. Fossil shoe. Fossil shoe. You're right there, Marshall? Yeah, no, no. Yeah.
We can put something up you behind your head for a So I'm, I'm resting on a shelf. <laughs> Very comfortable it is. Too. Good. Okay. Coming to Marshall, Ben, I'm on your side. Right. And action. Ben, Ben, I'm on your side. If Ted Pratt was here. Yeah, yeah, if Ted Pratt was here. You know, one time when Len Squires threw out a vital piece of evidence, Ted put him in a barrel and pushed him down eight flights of stairs. What was he doing with a barrel in an eight-storey office? I think you've skipped a line. I have. <laughs> what? Out here? You know what you're going? The line. Pick it up. Here we go. We're Putting picking it up. Eight flights of stairs. Here we go. It's a pickup. Two. And <laughs> action. Previously, I've just done flat chat comedy, but I suppose in this instance I had to let go of the side of the pool a little bit to do some, <laughs> I wouldn't call it serious acting. <laughs> like for the whole time before Pete comes out. <laughs> Is that too much? No, I don't reckon, because we're up high. Um, <laughs> I don't know if we can register. <laughs> Right way, wrong way, right way right of every single scene. I was hoping for the DVD. Here's some scenes that were deleted. Really? <laughs> <laughs> really <laughs> fucking up. <laughs> I reckon we should film one. <laughs> Just send them to the Garrett Doors. <laughs> invite them to a Russian screening. <laughs> I can believe fucking so. I wonder when Pete comes out on roller skates. I'm, I'm, wearing, I'm wearing a Bobby's hat. <laughs> You're truncheon. Marshall Napier's just here shaking his fist. Why are you? They both had those. The Prince match. That sits here. Pendlebury had two more. Who carries three guns? Cut. Tassel. Well, Pleasure doing business with you. Lovely. Ooh, that's yeah, toasty yeah, warm. Let me tuck you in. I'm in the gift shop of sale of the century. <laughs> and we have Bob. Bob's doing his hamming in the background. Oh, sorry, Bob. Uh, acting in the background. <laughs> so we do two shots on film camera. We see Bob going to the ladder, and then we'll cut and we'll go to tape. Um, but can I just hand over to Aaron just to explain what's going to happen? As Eddie goes up the ladder, acting as Bob, ladder falls, is towed forward as though it's falling forward with Bob on it. And you really don't have to put your weight, you're not intended to put your weight onto it anyways, because it integrally is cracked at that point. That's why we're supporting you with the harness. Well, all the best with this, everyone. I've got a... <laughs> <laughs> is that going to be OK then? Yeah. Coming. <laughs> Slugs get a big sheet of glass. Do you're asking me what your face is doing. Which way left the perpetrator? Once again, I didn't get it. But you'll be calling me. Okay, got attention. Thank you. We are rolling. Stand by, coming to Gina, thanks. And backgrounders as well. And action. By calling someone, he then fled the store, taking with him a life-size cutout of Merv Hughes. If you have any information which may lead to the perpetrator of this baffling misdemeanour, or any information whatsoever... Pretty much as soon as it hits your, I should start sliding. Or should the, should uh, the glass break? <laughs> yes. So Tony, the glass didn't break? Yeah, that's alright. information which may lead to the perpetrator of this baffling misdemeanor or Well, 
information which may lead to the purpose. Hey! If you have any information which may lead to the purpose, hey! they go. Thanks, guys. Here we go. Stand by, please. Everyone set? Thank you. I'll just put this up again. Thank you, Sue. You right to go? We are rolling. Thanks. Stand by, Sue. You order to And action! By calling someone, he then fled the store, taking with him a life-size cutout of Merv Hughes. If you have any information which may lead... <laughs> I think uh, making feature films for me has been a big mistake and uh, one that I, I can't really rectify now but um, I doubt if I'll ever do it again. So you haven't been enticed by the glamour of the film world? I've been enticed by the glamour, certainly, but um, I've simply been unable to hold up my end of the bargain. What do you see as next for Bob Franklin? Next for Bob Franklin, probably a job at a council, maybe grave digging, something of that nature. Fucking mess, Ted. I tell everybody no paper records. Now I want those files destroyed, and I want those two and the girl out of the picture for good. Are you still there? Cut. Fantastic show. Sean McCain, a very clever, very clever, very smart man. Not many friends. Bob, just Bob, you know, he used to ring up, ring me up and bother me, begging me for work on my own television shows. And uh, Mick, obviously, you know, you know, difficult man. And Judith, as, uh, well, she's clinically insane. Thank you. Thanks, Mick. Mick's there. This has all been you, hasn't it? Don't know what you mean. Well, it's it to you, so you know, part of the police force, is it? Sorry, shouldn't you at least be trying to escape? Oh, you're coming with us. And you're threatening me with yeah. what? Sorry, Jens, sorry to cut, but um, at the moment, Mick is completely behind Sean. Sure, uh, <laughs> I'll do, I'll do. What's he up to? From the throne? Yeah, if that's all right. So Bob going from, from the throne? Throw it from the catch. Oh, you're quite okay. right, I could well be. It's just that I don't know where the cuts are going to fall, yeah. so I can do this otherwise. Yeah, no. <laughs> I could do that. That was great. Right. 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 Just back to broad it. You know, like yeah. the legal to frame. Okay. So I went there. You're saying what the fuck. Yeah, I'll say what the and, fuck. And uh, fix pick up, take two, second cut. Okay. Right. Action. Jesus. Oh, fuck, sorry, that's fucked. <laughs> still rolling. Still rolling. Still rolling. Here you go. Mm -hmm. And frame. Right. And action. 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 What the fuck? It's a very, very unstable hand grenade. Fuck, sorry. More. Sorry, beg Just your pardon. Keep rolling. Just yep. keep rolling. Shouldn't have stood out. Okay, frame, rolling. Frame, settle, frame, and action. Jesus. Oh, fuck, I can't do this anymore. Hang on. Just, just chuck it at me. Sorry. Still rolling. Plenty of film. Frame. We've brought up big, and the ratio's great. Here we go. <laughs> and action. Thanks. 
Thank you, Marcus. After these three months, I'll be well looked after my friend. <laughs> okay, and you're working with, you know, an icon of the Australian industry, uh, young William Hunter. Mm. Um, is, you know, is it, what's it like finally meeting someone and working with somebody who you've seen that often? Yeah, well, I'm, again, not, not met or worked with him before, and uh, I'm not even sure I'm working with him in this film. I have, a, I have a scene where I'm talking to him on the phone, but Bill wasn't there, it was just Tony doing Bill's voice. I'm pretty much talking like this. What do you mean? And that was Tony's impression of Bill Hunter, the icon of the Australian film industry. <laughs> that was it. Oh, yeah. It's a weird season between autumn and winter that only exists in Melbourne. Alan Bro, he's quite a character. <laughs> Knows how to wear a cardi. Looks good in beige. He refused to talk to anyone on set for the entire film. He would only communicate via a series of whistles that uh, he carried around with him. <laughs> and then he's looking at Ernie and, and she sees my name's Glenn Jackson. He goes, how did you do that? You did that with our your lips. And then she turns around and goes, no, I'm Glenn Jackson. He said, you're not getting away with that, lass. He's just doing that better than you. <laughs> I think the most enjoyable part was putting all the clothes on the first time I saw him and just went, was looking in the mirror and had these big glasses on and a, a brown jumper or I think I might have had a top jacket on and brown jumbo cords, which are not a thing I wear all the time. And uh, it was quite exciting because I looked at it and I thought, wow, oh, this is, you know, finally I've got my opportunity to become the sex symbol which I've been readied for all my life to become. Every day is just that lovely bubble, you know, that's sort of the way things just bubble along on a really positive note. Mr. Chap. You know, between each take, there is so much talk going on between each everyone, uh, telling stories, that it's just like being, it's like being at a party and every now and then you have to stop and do 30 seconds of serious work while the camera rolls, and then you can go back to talking about what you were, you know, discussing before. Okay, going now, Steve. You do your own stunts, so... Um... Yes, I do, yeah. What yes, I've always prided myself on, uh, you know, doing the dangerous work myself. Um, particularly in this film, I was, uh, I had to take a... Um, rather severe blow to the testicles, which uh, I said, that's fine by me. Action! Oh! In your oh. plum jam! <gasps> I think I need some protection. Right? <laughs> yeah, I, I jumped at the chance to not only work with Nicholas, but to kick him in the nuts as hard as I could. It's the first chance I've had to do it, at least on screen. That's, there's a strap about four inches below my, below my nuts, okay? Deep is better than short. Really? It's just the most outrageous thing in the world to do. So you I've sucked him up, mate. You can still <laughs> Japanese drama school. Like, this is, this, is, this man attractive. played Lord Grey in the Royal Shakespeare <laughs> Theatre Company. He's Richard III with Anthony Shearer, and I'm kicking him in the nuts. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is for the lo longest, most boring night in theatrical history. <laughs> <laughs> so, deep is better. Yeah, that's good. That's it. Okay, one more step. Oh, yeah. Tell you what, can you, can you knock me up a pair of those pants? I reckon that come in handy, I reckon. <laughs> Three, four, five, take two. Mark okay. And action! Oh! In oh. one for plum jam! Oh! Oof! Oh! oh. oh. Harding. Something snapped. Something, something snapped. Hurt. I it snapped. It fucking snapped. 
d the prognosis is good. I should my treatment's ongoing, but you know, hopefully they'll still be there in a year's time. That's a wrap for Nicholas's testicles. <laughs> <laughs> The Victorian Police Commissioner praised the efforts of reporter Julie Bale, who had just one day earlier declared Kinnear the face of corruption, and incidentally a dud root, on the front page of the Melbourne Tribune. <laughs> <laughs> Scripts were never so good. That spending spree is just hours away for 525, which title doesn't belong? For fuck's sake, which one is it? <laughs> we can cut there. <laughs> it's sociopath. No, would it be uh, osteopath? Surely, that's your back, isn't it? No, 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 no. Don't you see? All the others are medical. Sorry, I'm sorry. And I repeat, that's your back, isn't it? And then that's oh, really that, an upside side. So you back, isn't it? And then, no, 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 no. Don't you see? All the others are medical professionals. I mean, you don't go to a sociopath for a medical problem, do you? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Not quite yet. <laughs> you are calm, but when he's trying to move you, it's suddenly you're not just calm. Yeah. You know what I mean? You, it's probably, yeah, if he wasn't moving, you could probably maintain a calm facade, but when he's trying to move you, it's, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. It's just, it goes into overload. I can do that, I think. No, right. I hope. I don't think I was a very good influence on Tony when we were working together because cause he originally comes from New Zealand and so do I. When we, I was around him, he would start speaking in a really broad New Zealand accent and the rest of the crew would start taking the piss out of him. That's the third clip. You've gone to number three? Hello, I've got an frame for um, uh, uh, a speech impediment. Oh, well, I'll try undermining it with an addictive pattern of antisocial behaviour then. <laughs> I think I will go home. Cut. I might be fired. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Good Cheers. You get an impression of Mick from from the TV and the radio, and uh, he's identical. Um, you know, he's not <laughs> some effete, uh, shavian uh, fop. In real life, he's uh, pretty much uh, as you'd expect him to be. Like it? Is it you? <laughs> Frank. And action. Toofy. <laughs> Get that down to forensic. Oh, now that's just wrong. interview with Bob Franklin. Bob, you play Mike Paddock in Bad Eggs. Mm -hmm. How would you describe the character of Mike Paddock? Yeah, he's a wonderful, wonderful character. What was the case? Remember Tuscan Bob? Yeah. The twat who wanted to build yellow townhouses on top of <laughs> fucking Royal Melbourne Hospital. <laughs> Shot there last day. Do you want to pick it up from... Uh... Tony Martin wrote the character of Mike Paddock with you in mind. I mean, is that a flattering thing? I think it says more about Tony than uh, than anything. He clearly can't invent any characters of his own. And uh, he's, um, he's pretty much just based them on uh, people that he knows. <laughs> uh. Needless to say, he's uh, he's a first-time director, and um, I think it would be fair to say he's lent on me pretty heavily during the the shoot. He was desperately unprepared for the whole thing, and um, I suppose I, I've been a help to him. I hope I have. Now, you remember this uh, fake newspaper headline mm -hmm. for the Melbourne Tribune foyer, and it's meant to say, "Refugees kill." Cute bunny, mm. says PM. The absurdness of <coughs> yeah. Here's what they've done. <laughs> Refugees <laughs> kill huge bunny. <laughs> sure, quite funny in itself, but not quite the same as cute bunny. <laughs> 150 refugees and going, can... an enormous bunny with spears. But can I draw your attention to... Oh yes, that's an in-joke. That's one of our crew who's made... 11 
background cameo appearances to date. And he'll be walking past this picture, and that will be his 12th. Oh, really? Yes. You remain in shot, he said. A bit of a cold bit of virus in the show, but he's actually not that I remember um, when Tony was talking to me about the part and he said to me, Jude, you know how you get this look, which I'm not really aware of, but it's my worried face when I get all kind of, yes, far away. It's very attractive. But he said, I don't want to see that look on Julie Bale and just said, you know, she's really confident, doesn't give a shit about anything. So before each take, I would actually just stare at the ceiling and just think, relax you forward, relax you forward. So that was really the key to my characterization. What time would you like breakfast? <sighs> the crazy chemistry between Mick Malloy and I. Well, I don't know. What did they used to say about Astaire and Rogers? That Rogers gave Astaire warmth and he gave her class? I think you'll find I give Mick both warmth and class. We've worked in radio, TV and, and stand-up, so we just have a, a bit of water under the bridge, so it was quite comfortable to work with Jude. Um, and we've slept together. Did I mention that? Yeah, no, that really helped too. Thank you, Michael, for standing quietly in your position. How did you, how did you, how did you do it with Magda? And he just said, repeatedly, wind up and go to town. In your position quietly, thank you, Mr Malloy. And do you think there's a sideline for, for Mike's character in the film? He's somewhat of a sexual adventurer. Mm -hmm. um, is that something that you had to do a lot of research for? <laughs> um, yes it is, yes it is, again that's, um, well no we'll go into it here, um, I've been exploring a number of uh, techniques for quite some time and I think they came to fruition uh, in, in Mike's character, I think it's all there to see, I think you know what he's been through. Can you hop on that, please? Yes, I want it. Regret nothing. <laughs> <laughs> and action. Can you reach it? Yeah. Anything? No, it is. No, it is. Look, they're dropping it down. So it's this section here that we're doing, but in that frame. Oh, really fucking This is my new show. It's part of my new show. I hang up here and give out facts. <laughs> Action! Cut! Oh, that is brilliant. That is absolutely brilliant. Action! Should we flip me down? No, that was good, The only special preparation I had to do for this role was uh, a little bit of gym work. I had to put together a bit of a floor routine for my tumble, which fortunately is in slow motion. Good. Oh, too old for K7.
Remember T6? No, I strapped to ankle. No, I strapped to each ankle. It's true, I've done so much. Uh, live, radio, television, film. Well, I have to say that especially as opposed to doing a one-woman show, uh, which is really where it's just all about you, you're just, um, you know, you're just a tiny piece of the jigsaw when it comes to film, so I didn't enjoy that aspect of it. Some things that happen for the first time seem to be Four nine three, pick up, take one. Some things that happen for the first time. Like James Bond, the three of us in bed, <laughs> telling the new boss that we won't be in the <laughs> That is that very, very smooth, good. people. Yeah, old Mr. Lightfoot. Frankly. Oh, this is in your favour and just cut in. Let's see what I can do. I got some other dancers to get to later this week. Jumping into it. Straight up and we'll laugh. Take your time, guys. Take your time. Okay. Action. Oops. Oh. <laughs> like a safety. Got me on my fucking head. Yeah. Last night. <laughs> this is what we should be hearing as the camera goes away. <laughs> this is the shot times dreamed of, so you know. Yeah. Yeah, well, it's in safe hands. <laughs> it sure is. What could go wrong? <laughs> oh, coffee over here is on fire. <laughs> what are you calling it? Cloppy! Cloppy! He is deliberately undermining me. He's been doing it throughout the whole show. So you're doing both? Is he sort of lifting you up? Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, no. Uh, it's, like she's, it's like she's walking on hot coals. Jesus. <laughs> well, I saw a heel was going it's around It's like there. I'm dancing with a, you know, elephant. Hey, hey, hey. No, they got that. Oh, I'm this is setting the mood beautifully. Now, for, for you, your background is rich in um, mm -hmm. comedy, both on stage and television. And, mm -hmm. um, has it been an interesting shift for you, your first leading role in, in, in film? Oh, it's been a very easy step to make and one that uh, was, was always just waiting to happen, I, I suspect. Um, needless to say, the theatre is my first love, but... Um, uh, it's been uh, terrific to work with actors of the caliber of uh, Hunter, Nevin, Napier, my sort of people, I like to think of them as. Um, Nicholas Bell, of course, very astute, very astute man, tends to sum up people very quickly and he's very rarely wrong. No, actually, he's not. I, I don't like Bob at all. I find him an awful man. All he talks about is soccer and uh, the catering, and I just find that totally... Uh, it's driving me nuts. I'm sorry. He's also from North London, an area I particularly detest. 
and uh, it just rubs me up the wrong way. Brian, and action. We need to talk. You want to step into the conservatory? Fantastic explosion. Now we'd like to do one where the cameras are rolling. That's all right. <laughs> no, thanks very much. Yay! It was him. It Dummy, action! 
Well, were there any injuries or mishaps on the film? The only crew member who was injured on the set of Bad Eggs was the nurse who uh, walked into a lighting stand and knocked herself out. Um, apparently she hadn't been concentrating during her own talk. Um, we also had three people hurt tripping over bright orange safety cones, including the safety officer. Um, he'll be walking again in about two weeks. Um, but it's very important to have uh, safety people on the set of your film so that all the injuries can happen to them. Uh, there was also a lot of gunplay on the, on the film as well. Nobody was uh, uh, shot, to my knowledge. Or if they were, it was kind of hushed up. But uh, Judith Lucy in particular um, insisted that if she's going to be in a film called Bad Eggs, she wanted to be, a, quote, busting a cap into somebody's ass. Love it. You right, Mick? Great. Right. Stay back. He's a very cool customer. You won't be rushing back to stand up? You, you see yourself more in a filmic manner from here on in? I would say so, yes. I would say so. Um, I mean, once you've started a love affair with the camera, it's, it's a hard thing to break off. And if the camera returns that, as it obviously does... I think it's reciprocal, Johnny. I think we can safely say it's reciprocal. Thank you, Rory. Thank you. So this is your, your second um, comedy in Melbourne, mm -hmm. back to back. Um, are, are you enjoying stepping back in, into the comedy realm? I've never been noticed for, as, as a comic actor, but uh, a role's a role, and whatever it demands, you, you try and deliver. Yeah, it's been a lot of fun, and uh, I'm enjoying Melbourne too. So ending up with everyone kind of about here when the guns are fired. That way we get to have all these tyres being shot behind Bill. So, let's run it again, Jets. Not very happy, Mr Wicks. I'm hoping to be a bit more dead. Bill's saying a bit, but I don't mind because Wick did a bit of tad oh, yesterday when he was saying about close to the curve, so I'm not even letting him Too many, two tads, two tads close together. Yeah. I was hoping to be a bit more dead. Of course, I knew this was <laughs> all feeble. far too elaborate for Wix's tiny brain. Far too elaborate for my tiny little brain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this was far too elaborate for Wix's tiny little brain. Shut the fuck up, can you hear? Cut. <laughs> Do we, do we go from the pipe down here? Oh, well, I want to shut the fuck up here. Yes, we do. So you'll have to take it from Bill's line. That's when the queue comes. That's when Bill begins. Right. Right. In, boom out, boom out. Shut the fuck up, Kinnear. Everything was going fine until you decided to put your head in. But the fun's over for you two fuck knuckles because... Try it again, Bill. Cue. Shut the fuck up, Kinnear. Everything was going fine until you put your head in.
through the van. Hey, Cap. Okay, a bit of rain coming in over there, guys. The rough cut of the EPK is going to be like four hours long. Oh, I'll move it. Don't you look at me, okay? Yeah. Oh, I'll just if, yeah, I've got some. I'll try again. Very sorry for the and action. I just didn't want this process to end. I wanted us to be stuck in some kooky bubble where we just had to keep seeing each other every day for the rest of our lives. That probably would have worn off after about another three weeks, but you know. Judith Lucy, yes. Uh, she's, she's, she's just a treat. And I love working with her. I love her. Um, I, I, get this, I get this distinct impression it's not over yet for uh, as far as I'm concerned. I'll be working with Lucy and Malloy and all those rat bags again, I think. Okie dokie, Mrs. P. Leave it with us. Oh, hey. Listen, I just. Stop it. Um, I tell you, bad eggs are sort of like a cross between the Sweeney and Ghostbusters. A lot of films uh, went into the uh, the idea behind bad eggs. I think Lestrada and King Ralph. It's El Topo for the new millennium. That's how I uh, like to regard the film as. It's a little death in Venice. It's a little Irma La Douce. It's a little Porky's Four. I think there's I think there's truly something for everyone in bad eggs. Four, seven, take two. Like it. Um, Mick, of course, he's, uh, I suppose, what you'd call a rough diamond. Um, he has a certain charm, apparently. Um, I think there's probably a little too much of him up there on the big screen. Um, Judith, she's had a go. She's had a go. I doubt if any of her scenes will make the final cut, but um, she's had a go, and good luck to her. I wish her. I wish her all the best. How about somebody like Alan Pro? Mm. How do you feel about Alan's work? He should maybe look into radio, something of that nature. Yes, um, maybe writing. I think he could uh, he could turn a phrase or two. He seems to have trouble speaking, but um, the written word maybe maybe more suited to him. Bob's sort of like a paper bag that's been completely flattened out, and Mick's like a paper bag that's still got half the stuff left in it, and he's sort of got this lovely sort of weary young rumpole of the Bailey quality about him. Oh, I mean, this is the, this is clearly not the getting work from him answer. But that's what I reckon. He's sort of got that sort of weary, you know, homicide lawyer look to him, where when you're talking about something, he's just going, yeah, I've seen dead people, Alan. <laughs> I don't know. Well, you could just say hungover, Alan. <laughs> oh, no, I didn't mean that at all. <laughs> oh no, that did come across like that, didn't I? Didn't mean that at all. The only time I've seen him hung over, we were all there, and he turned up like an hour and a half late, but we didn't shoot until after lunch anyway. And he just lay down on the ground, 
and I'd been drinking with him before that night and gone home quite early and he was just unbelievably fucked but about an hour and a half later off he went Die. As you leave Bad Eggs, what will be some of the lasting impressions or treasured memories you'll take with you? Um, the eye fillet, the uh, toffee pudding, that uh, creamy seafood uh, sauce, which I think came about day 25, and the big jugs of cream, uh, which, which just seemed to, seemed to never stop. And, um, I suspect I may spend some of my time just following round the, the caterers and um, pretending I'm working on, uh, on other films. Um, working with Bob is fantastic, you know. I mean, what am I going to say? The guy's an asshole. <laughs> no one ever would, even if he was. It's a dumb question. <laughs> <laughs> you have to answer them. They're standards. <laughs> okay, ask me again. No, it's gone. There was something, but oh, it's been so long. In fact, within a week it had gone. I think, you know, Tony Munn, the, uh, the director, right, does his best to, um, to prod our memories by calling us back for reshoots as often as possible, um, which I enjoy. Uh, so I think the indelible thing that will remain forever scratched into my memory will be not anything I did but the fact of the reshoots the fact that my hand was recalled to hold a grenade oh I'm giving too much away you'll have to see the film or the video or the DVD the DVD is quite good apparently it features um, a lot of this wonderful okay they're bad eggs. Let's do confidence. No one's going to come and see this. <laughs> What is the audience that, um, who's going to go and see Bad Eggs? Who's going to get right into it as a film? People looking for somewhere to get out of the cold. Um, people going through the bargain bins in, uh, in a couple of years. I think uh, that's our target audience. And when they watch the film, what's the experience that you would like them to leave, that they have or that they remember when they leave the cinema? Hopefully they'll forget it as soon as possible and we can all move on.